So at this point I have realized that when I was explaining, I believe, what the Laddie mission was, um, I was probably explaining it at, um, at a time where I was fast forwarding. So I'm just going to explain it now. NASA launched a probe a little while ago called Laddie. Um, I think it was like a low atmosphere density evaluation something or other. Anyway, the purpose of it was to see if there was in fact an extremely thin atmosphere around our moon, you know, the one that orbits the planet Earth. And so the idea, like I said, was to collect, if it was possible, a sample and analyze what exactly the constituents of that particular atmosphere would be or are. They found that there is, in fact, an atmosphere. Uh, the theory was that there was one prior to actually going and investigating because of the Apollo missions. And what would happen during the Apollo missions is whenever sunrise would occur above the moon, the astronauts noticed that there was a slight haze along the horizon. And they weren't quite sure what it was, but it was theorized that it was probably a very thin atmosphere. Laddie has since more or less proven, although the data is still coming back and being analyzed, has since more or less proven that there is, in fact, an extremely thin atmosphere around the moon itself. Now, it's, I think, about a trillionth of the density of the Earth, so it's not really much of an atmosphere, but there is one nonetheless made up of uh, dust particles and whatnot, and so it's brought about the theory that it is entirely possible that large asteroids and moons and whatnot all have their own very tiny atmospheres. What that can be used for, I have no idea, but it's interesting to know nonetheless. Okay, that being said, it's about time for us to time accelerate a little bit here. Okay, and we're just waiting 10 more seconds, and then we will go ahead and begin our burn. So, three, two, one, and go. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Here comes our burn. Burn, 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 stop. Okay. That should be pretty darn good. Let's see what we've actually got. That's about eight kilometers up. Again, a little bit scary, but not too scary. Um... So as you can see, what we've got here is we've got not quite the orbit that we want. So what we're going to do is, I think, what we're going to do is we're going to first figure out what the actual orbital dimensions of the other ship are. And then based on that, we're going to start lining things up. So this ship has a 16 by 34 and a half kilometer orbit. So we want to bring this one up, I think. What we'll do is we're going to bring this one up to approximately, say, 12 kilometers. It shouldn't be all that terrifically difficult. And we're going to then bring the apoapse down a bit. And following that, we're going to set up an encounter with our little buddy here. That should be pretty darn good. Should be pretty darn close to what we want. Lovely. What is that giving us? 13.2. Excellent. 13.2. So, now, what we're going to try to do is figure out where exactly the apoapse and the periapse of this particular ship is. And it looks like they're more or less even. So I guess what we will do at this point is we're just going to drop our apoapse down to approximately uh, 33 kilometers. I think would be pretty reasonable there. So, two, one, a burn. Cut it right about there. And what has that given us? That has given us something pretty reasonable, I think. So we are at... Oh, okay. There. Great. 13 by 33. We are now within the orbit of our Mooner Lander thingamajigger. 
However, we also need to adjust our orbit so that they line up, and then we're going to adjust out to make an encounter. So how do we do that? Well, more or less zoom in on this point where the two orbits will intersect, yeah, right about there, and then we're going to adjust the orbit at downwards, something like that. And you also want to do this again, set this as the target, and that'll bring up your little indicators here, which indicate how far away we are on the node. Okay, great. So, that's getting a bit worse. And again, we're just trying for roughly zero degrees of separation. And since that's a decent amount of change in delta V, uh, we should, in theory, be able to nail that down pretty darn well, if you ask me. Estimated burn of one second, though, so this is going to be pretty quick burn. And we're going to try to nail this down as best we possibly can here. Ooh, there. Okay. Hopefully, what that has done is given us more or less a perfect orbit. I don't know, but let's find out. 0 0.01 degrees, 0 0.1 degrees, pretty darn good if you ask me. Um, yeah, great. Now what we can do is we can start making very fine adjustments to our orbit. Um, very fine adjustments indeed to get us exactly where we want to be. So this side is inside. This side is slightly outside. Our encounter would be 400 kilometers away, which is nowhere near what we want it to be. What we're going to do, I think, at this point, is we are going to set up a maneuver node over here. Right about there. We're going to burn ever so slightly retrograde. And this is just to bring our orbit inside of the orbit of that. about there we're gonna burn beautiful now that should be pretty darn good um, let's remove that let's see what we've got we're still 13 and a half kilometers there and we are at about 31 kilometers there so we should be inside the orbit itself and we are and we are still about 0.1 degrees off and what's our closest approach currently at? Our closest approach is currently at 447.9 kilometers. So 448 kilometers. Okay. Well. Let's see what we can do about that. Over time, what we will notice is that these closest approaches are going to get closer and closer and closer. And once they get to a reasonable distance away, I'm going to do a quick save. And then we're going to adjust the orbit so that we can get within a kilometer closest approach. Okay, at this point, uh, I want to make a minor course correction as well. Um, it's not necessarily going to be our final course correction, but I want to make a minor course correction because I'm noticing where our uh, periapse and our apoapse is not exactly aligned. As you can see, this our current trajectory kind of goes outside here, then comes back in. It's a little bit deeper in relative to this one than the other. So I'm just going to make a minor adjustment. So let's go ahead and initiate the burn. Pretty much bang on there. Okay. Let's see what that's given us. That has given us a relatively close approach. Let's just speed up time a little bit here. See what actually happens to our orbits. So we should be catching up a little bit, right? We should still be catching up, but let's see 
what it actually looks like. So we're going to pass through the intersection, see if that drops off a bit. And it does. Okay. It does by about 30 kilometers, which is pretty darn good. So I believe if we just go around one more time, then we should be fairly close and we can make our final adjustment to our orbit such that we're going to wind up coming in within an intersection of not very many kilometers at all. Hopefully it'll be an intersection of under one kilometer. If it isn't, that will be frustrating but we will do the best that we can. Okay, so that is now a 10 kilometer difference. We need to get that down a little bit. Oof, okay, 1.7 kilometers, and then it'll start to get away from us. So pretty much at this point, I'm going to want to be burning... Ooh, I actually have a target velocity. I'm actually locked onto the target now. Well, that is something entirely different. Now that I'm actually locked onto the target and I can see where it is, I'm going faster than the target, technically. Okay. I think what I want to be doing and again I'm not completely certain about this, but let's just let's just think this one through. So if that is the target's actual velocity itself, and I think that it is. I think that's what the navball is telling me, that this that this velocity vector is actually the target's velocity vector. So that would mean, in theory. Hmm. I don't know. I don't actually know. Whatever. Let's speed around to where we need to be. Let's get our RCS on here. Where is my target? My target is up there. Let's try... Let's try burning out towards the target and see what that's doing. What's that doing to my actual orbit here? Intersect seems to be getting closer as I'm doing this. That's up and down, that's left and right. How do I go forwards and backwards? I do not recall how to do the forward and the backward. I think that means that the target is still moving away from me at 5.3 me- Whoop. Am I approaching the target now? I don't even know. Okay, well it appears that if I continue to do this... I will eventually get yet another intersection. Ooh, ooh, okay. I 
I have no idea what I'm doing right now, but apparently I'm doing something right. Point three. Oh, okay. Point four kilometers. <sighs> okay. Let's just see what that gives us then. Speed up a little bit here. Target speed going down. Target speed going up. I don't want target speed go up. I want target speed go down. I also don't understand how I go forward and backward here. Okay, that's H. Is it N? I guess it is N. Okay. I think we're getting the hang of this, kids. Okay, we're down to one meter per second. We're 175 meters away. And I am slowly but surely zeroing in. And I think at this point what I'm trying to do is just align these thrust vectors on top of each other, I believe, more or less. Okay, so we're now moving at about 0.7 meters per second towards the target. I think I want to just cut that a tiny bit more. Okay, and I'm just going to let ourselves drift in until we're nice and close. Actually, what I really want to do here, turn RCS off, and I'm going to reorient on the craft itself. I'm also going to arm this grabber. Okay, we're still moving towards the target at a very stately few meters per second. Let's turn the RCS back on now. And again, we want to just try to line up our velocity vectors, I think, so that they more or less match here. Yeah. Okay. Let's turn the RCS off. Align the spaceship itself. RCS back on to maintain stability, and it looks like we're coming in. Now, I haven't used this arm before, so I don't know how this actually works. But I'm thinking it should, I hope anyway, just kind of grab this sucker automatically. I don't know. We're going to find out, though, that's for sure. 0.7 meters per second. Let's try to kill that speed a little bit. I want to go as nice and slow as I can here. 0.4 meters per second, 0.3 meters per second, 0.2 meters per second. Try to keep it locked into the center there as best we can. Looking okay like this might actually work. Five meters away to the center. The question is, how does this actually work? Are we... We're docked! Oh my god, we did it! Oh my god, we actually did it! Oh my god, we did it! I can retract the ladder! I can do all of the things I want to do! That's wonderful! Oh! Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, I'm so very happy. So very, very happy. Let's do some science. We can't do any science. Who cares? I'm so happy. Okay, wonderful. Well now, 
now that we've done that, now that we've done that, um, let's go ahead and deorbit ourselves. So, this is the highest point, this is the lowest point, meaning that we are going to deorbit from here. And we're just going to add a maneuver like this. We're going to crash into the surface of the moon. Let's make this as spectacular as possible, shall we? Okay. Now, I think I want to be pretty gentle with this when I'm actually rolling it, because I don't know how well stuck together these things really are at this point. Okay, 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 I like it, I like it, I like it. Bye-bye, Kerbin. That's a nice view, though, eh? Kerbin's just going away, and this is about to smash into the ground. Okay, lovely. Um, so, we've got that far away to burn. Let's just see if I do a quick test burn here, what is actually going to happen. Okay. Alright, that's actually dropping. Wonderful. I'm just going to keep on burning like this, honestly. I don't want to push it. So I'm just going to keep on dropping us down here. Already, though, we've pretty much... Yeah. Okay, that should be pretty good right there, but we'll keep on dropping it, obviously. But at this point, we are on a suborbital trajectory. Which is great. So we're now headed for a collision with the moon itself. So we'll keep on burning like that, and um, I'm going to set up a Duna mission after this, but I am very happy with the way that worked out. It's a little bit tricky there on the rendezvousing side of things, but eventually got that nailed down. It certainly wasn't a very good rendezvous by any stretch of the imagination, but I'll get some more practice in. I've got uh, got that jewel mission that I'm planning, which will give me more than adequate amount of time to practice this. Um, to practice this rendezvousing type stuff and doing docking and whatnot, and that'll be great. Get ourselves into a nice high orbit there, and we're going to come down ballistically. Alright, we've now begun our descent. I think at this point... this point, I kind of want to point this ship that has been such a hassle to me for so long. I kind of want to point it towards the ground a little bit here. Whoa, 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 whoa. What am I doing? Oh, who cares what I'm doing? Let's flip this sucker over. Let's try to burn for that, eh? Because you know what? That, that sounds like fun. Let's do it. Burn. Burn away! Burn away towards our first lunar landing position thingy, Majigger. Here we go. We're going for it. We're coming down. It's all gonna explode. It's gonna go boom. Get ready for it. Here it comes. And... Smashy smashy. <laughs> awesome. Ah, oh, mission accomplished. And we were only 10 kilometers off. That's not so bad. Great! No more stupid debris. No more stupid orbiting thing around the moon. I'm very pleased with that. Ah, boy. All kinds of crashing. Let's go back to the space center. Well. 
Again, very happy with that. Just going to give you um, a brief shot of what I had originally tried to use to deorbit. Uh, obviously, this was a lot easier because I actually had that arm to grab onto it and just latch me onto it directly. But before I used my little uh, laddie wannabe, I had a deorbiter, which is somewhere around here. The deorbiter. So the design for this was pretty darn simple. This was back when I've had very few parts. Um, and the whole idea was that I had a little probe body up here with some RCS on it and then these gears that would uh, go ahead and kind of grab, that just hold onto the thing on the outside. And it almost worked, uh, but in the end it didn't. So that other setup that I had was a lot better, a lot more, uh, a lot more useful, a lot more efficient, just a lot better in general. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Thank you very much for watching my silly little deorbiting video. Next time I'll be doing uh, a mission to Duna. So we're going to get some science off of Duna. That'll be great. And hopefully, with all the science that I return back from Duna, maybe, maybe not, but hopefully I will be able to unlock the last little bit of this tech tree here. Don't have much left to go, though. I've just got a few plane parts and uh, those rover wheels there. And then I'm done. Then I've got all the parts that I could possibly hope for. And, uh, yeah, I'll be a happy camper. So once more, thanks again from all my Kerbal friends here. It's been uh, a great time. We've all had fun. And nobody died. Alright, take it easy.